Hi there, I'm Dan Alston from the Music and Creative Arts team. And lately here at Macca, we've had a few requests uh, for help with making PowerPoint presentations or, or presentations on screen look really professional and, and, and good quality. There are lots of different kinds of presenting software, easy worship, presenter, whatever else, but I'm gonna focus on PowerPoint, primarily because it's the one that most people will be using. Uh, but the principles of what I'm gonna talk about specifically in this session can be on any presentation software whatsoever. What are we looking for in a good presentation? Well, you want your presentation quite simply to communicate, either so that your congregation picks up on key themes and ideas in your service, or maybe uh, just to read along with maybe songs or Bible readings or collective readings. Uh, and for both of those uh, main purposes, well, we want three main things. We're looking for clarity, we're looking for consistency, and we're looking for contrast. And if we get all of those things, then we should have a really good presentation. So I'm going to run you through a few of the things that we can do with our slides. Uh, and I've created a template that you'll be able to download along with a few others using stock content on PowerPoint. So here is uh, the beginning of my presentation. I've got a title slide. Now, if you're running your service, you may not want a title slide. I'd suggest probably a lot of the time you don't need one, but if you've got a particular event, that you're celebrating, you've got a sermon series that you've been running and you want to have some consistency with, or maybe you just want a welcome to worship slide as people are entering your building, uh, then what we want to do with the title slides, we want it to be bold and it wants to be simple. Now, I told you about the three C's and they're all on this very first slide and we're gonna see it throughout the presentation. Okay, first thing we are looking for is clarity. So we've got um, some really big, bold font I've used uh, Futura, as you can see just here, okay? Um, that's a sans serif font, so there's no little bits hanging around. We've avoided all caps because it's difficult to read. We've gone some, for something that's very easy and straightforward for people to see straight away exactly what we mean. Uh, we've gone for contrast. The background is dark, you'll have noticed. I've got a little bit of texture in there, so it's not just one plain color, uh, but we've got a, a bold, dark background. And in contrast to that, we've used very light colored font. Uh, you might want to do it the opposite way around. You might want to have a white or very light colored background and some dark text on the front of that, just so it's easy to read. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to find colors that are too close to each other or that are a kind of a similar range of brightness to each other because it will be extremely difficult to read. And then the last thing is consistency. Throughout this presentation, as you can see on the left here, here are lots of the slides. I'll talk you through a few of those. We want it to be consistent. We don't want there to be any surprises which jump out at people and it distracts them from what's going on in worship. So that's really simple. I've put it slap bang in the middle of the slide. Now I wanted it in the middle and to ensure that I did, I've made my text box that you can see here. I just stretched my box up to the corners so that it is full screen. And then I've clicked into the middle here. It's not right or left aligned. Okay, we've gone center and we've gone into the middle of that box, not the top or the bottom or whatever else, we've stuck it right in the middle. Nothing is left to chance, okay? If I hadn't done that, I would then have been dragging it around, seeing if I can get my box in exactly the right space. Is it perfect? It looks fine to me, but if you put that up on the big screen and it wasn't central, uh, people would really notice and that would put some people off. Next, we've got some song slides. Probably most of the slides that you're gonna have in your presentation are gonna be song slides uh, because each song will have multiple verses that need to be on the screen. Uh, I'd say a good rule of thumb for a song slide is four lines of text on the screen at any one time. If you've got more than four lines in a verse or in a chorus, then split them up in the way that makes sense with the song. So uh, if you've got a six line verse, I'd put four on one slide and two on the next depending on if that worked with the song. So just look at the rhyming structure and see what makes sense with that. You could squeeze six on, but I wouldn't want many more. You want your song easy to read. When people are singing, they're doing two things at once, aren't they? They're reading and they're singing at the same time. We're not great at multitasking as humans, so we need to make that as easy as possible for people to do. Uh, here, I didn't want it central, I wanted left aligned. I think it's easier to read once you've finished one line of the song, you're, you're jumping around the screen, you're not finding where it is. It's nice and straight on that side. So I've brought my text box in just a little bit here, and we've got a very clear set of song lyrics there. And we don't want random capitalization in your text. That's one thing that does really annoy lots of people. Another thing to look out for, in fact, if you're copying off the internet, your lyric slides, 
uh, please look out for American spellings. It means the same thing, but for lots of people, uh, they find that really, um, I don't know, frustrating or annoying. And we don't want to do that while we're trying to sing our praise to God, do we? My second slide here, I've got a chorus slide and I've just used some italics so that it stands out and it's a little bit different. If you, especially if you're singing a song that you don't particularly know, if the, if the chorus slides have got a bit of consistency and they stand out, then people are going to feel, ah, we're back at that section of the song and I've learned that bit now. And then finally, uh, I'm onto my last slide of the song. And at my core, we use a little end symbol down in the bottom right hand corner. That helps whoever's doing the live accompaniment, if that's a, a pianist, the worship band, the, the bandmaster, whoever else, whoever's in control of that knows that we're coming to the end of the song and it avoids that uncomfortable moment when that's, po that's possible when somebody thinks we're carrying on with a song and we've run out of verses. If you have the songbook in front of you, that's not something you really need to think about, but if you're just following a presentation, then it's a really helpful thing to have. I have seen churches where they use this format at the bottom here, you can see, so the entire song structure is on the screen and they just highlight which part of the song they're on. That is useful if you want to know where you are in the song. But actually, I think that probably that's a bit too much text on the screen. So for most of the congregation, they want just the information that they need on the screen at any one moment. And we don't need to know where we are in the song as we're singing, as singing members of the congregation. It's only really the accompanist or the bandmaster, whoever, that actually need to know where we are in the song. Uh, so as long as they know when to stop, I think that's probably enough information. Between the different parts of your service, I would suggest you want a blank screen. OK, so I've put on here because this is a template for people to understand why there is a blank screen. Use a blank screen. We don't want any distractions. So I would have this text removed. Uh, if there's something on screen, people will be reading it. People will be looking at it. And if what they're supposed to be doing is listening to somebody speak, or if they're supposed to be praying, or if they're supposed to be concentrating on something and there's a distraction up on the screen, we aren't going to keep people with us. Here are my Bible verse slides. Again, this is personal preference, but it makes sense. Try and keep as little text on po as possible on screen. So I would try and stick to a general rule of thumb being one verse per slide. If they're short verses, use your common sense and go for two maybe. But here, one verse for the slide, and down in the bottom corner, we've just got the Bible reference here. People will want to know that. There will be those people that will go back and look it up later on in the week. Uh, so we want that to be there on the screen, but we don't need it to be the main focus of our text. So let's make sure that people are focusing on the thing that's important. I didn't mention it with the song lyrics, but it's the same here with the Bible verse. I want a header and a footer. I want some space around my, uh, around my text. If your text fills a screen, it looks really busy and overpowering and people find it difficult to read. When you're putting your Bible verse into this format, uh, a lot of people will be copying, I imagine, from somewhere like Bible Gateway, which is a great site for using to get different translations from of, of your verse. Uh, but please look out for things like this. OK, we've got our little reference point in there, which is just going to be distracting for people. Uh, and here we've got a hyperlink. Again, we do not want to see hyperlinks on on a screen it's it's not good it's not helpful it just distracts us from being able to focus on actually what is, is this passage of the bible saying to me about my life it does take a little bit more effort when you're uh, driving the technology either from the back of the hall or if you're clicking through as you're speaking to have to remember to keep clicking onto the next slide and the next slide and the next slide but it helps those people who are watching to read if we put up a whole big block of text from a bible verse say you're going to read four verses eight verses ten verses and they're all up on screen all the time. It's just so uh, domineering and overbearing for people to read. So let's make it nice and straightforward. My next slide here is the sermon illustration slide. This is the only time in my presentation I am using any animations or transitions because we want people to be able to just focus on what's going on and we don't want those little swirls in or this and or that and the other. However, here, because it is a slide that's going to be up on screen for a long time, we can use a little bit of animation and I'm just going to use something really subtle. So here's my sermon. Uh, I've got my main title or whatever it is at the top and I've got three points. Now, uh, as a Salvationist, I know that sermons come in three points and they usually start with the same letter. And we want those to gradually come up throughout the sermon when they're being spoken about. So it does mean that, again, that the person driving the technology needs to be switched on and listening, but we should all be switched on and listening by this point, I'm sure. 
And we only want the thing on the screen that's relevant. So the points will need to be able to come up as we're talking about them. And again, you'll see, I've just got a very subtle fade on those three points, uh, nothing more than that. And finally, my last couple of slides are announcement slides. So you may want to do this. I've seen call where these roll at the beginning of a meeting or at the end or both. I've seen people stand up and do their announcements with a presentation like this. And if you're going to do that, I would say your, uh, your title of whatever it is that you're announcing. So it might be an event, it might be a, a personal circumstance, it might be something that people need to know about your building, whatever else. That goes at the top, a title. And then here, I would just try and sum it up in one sentence. The more concise you are, the more likely it is that people are going to actually read what you've got on the screen. People are helped by having visual clues uh, quite often. So a little graphic or a picture of something there is great. Uh, so you might have a logo or a poster for a particular event, or you might have a photo of the person that you're talking about or whatever else, but please don't use copyrighted images in your presentations. And with my announcement slides, I've just got the two there, but they're going to alternate from one side to the other, just so that it keeps people's attention as you're going through. Remember that the announcements, we want people to take something in and remember it. So we want to do everything we can to give them the opportunity to do just that. So that's my basic uh, slide layout template. And like I said, that was going to be downloadable along with a couple other cover options uh, if you want to use those. A good PowerPoint presentation should be barely noticeable and it will be forgotten after the meeting, but a bad one can distract people and ruin a meeting. Most people can only concentrate on one thing at a time well. It's human nature. So we don't want to put things that are distracting on the screen and we want to use our presentations for their main purposes. If you stick to my three C's, uh, you will have no problem. We're looking for clarity, consistency and contrast. And if you manage to stick with those three things, then you will be just fine. If you join me next time, we'll be looking at how to put together a PowerPoint presentation, uh, where to find good quality images and video clips that you can include in your presentation, which are copyright free, and how to embed videos so that they hopefully run smoothly for you. I'll see you next time.